Okay, everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. This is video five in our The Prophet's Handbook series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment below. All those things help send my channel and these videos into the algorithm. And thank you so much for your support in the past, guys. It really has been tremendously helping with getting my um, videos into the algorithm, okay? Um, we're gonna open up today talking about witchcraft in the prophetic okay um it's kind of crazy to think that the two would even you know have some sort of relationship together but it is true okay so um the lord gave me a scripture to use for this teaching and the following teaching in the series okay so we're gonna be using the same verse kind of jumping off of that and guys, when I, when I say that the Lord gave me a verse, it wasn't that I you know, found a verse in the Bible and I was like, wow, this just wraps up so perfectly into what I'm teaching. I specifically pray and ask the Lord, what do you want me to teach on? Speak to me, tell me you know, what verses to use, that kind of thing. And this is the verse that he has handpicked for us. Now remember, it's a scripture verse and it can be used for anyone. But we are specifically honing in on the prophetic. He is he has specifically picked, handpicked this verse for us as his prophetic people. Okay. So don't take it lightly. All right. So this is Philippians 2, uh, verse 3, and it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. All right, so we're going to focus in this teaching on the first part of this verse, which is let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Okay, and another word for conceit there is pride. So let nothing that you do, right, in your prophetic, an uh, prophetic anointing, prophetic gifting, prophetic ministry, let nothing you do be done through selfish ambition or pride okay all right so he is cautioning us specifically saying don't use or operate your gift through selfish ambition okay some of you have heard um my teachings in the past and one of the things that i'm big on you'll hear me say this a lot is teaching people to be cautious be mindful of their heart motives, okay? Not just what you're doing and what you're saying, but why you're doing those things. That is the motive of your heart. Why you do what you do, why you say what you say, there's a reason behind it. And those motivations are very interesting, okay? If not wretched, okay? The Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked, okay? So, Selfish ambition, mentioned in our verse, is a huge, disgusting motive of our heart sometimes, okay? And we got to keep it in check, guys. We have to keep our heart in check, okay? Selfish ambition makes us think about ourselves and what we can gain from something, a situation, or a person, okay? So he's saying don't mix that. Don't mix that selfishness, trying to gain from others or every situation for your own selfishness. Don't mix that with your gift or your ministry, okay? Don't do it at all. But specifically, he's cautioning his prophetic people, okay? A person with um, the prophetic gifting that has never been taught about pure heart motives, guys, is on their way to falling heart, okay? Remember, we are known by our fruits, okay? And one of those fruits is love, a big one of them, right? Because God is love, okay? And we should look like him. And love is not self-seeking, okay? Meaning not looking out for its own self all the time. It thinks better of others, which is the second part of that verse that we're gonna get to um, in the next teaching, okay? Um, but this brings me to the core part of our teaching where we're talking about witchcraft okay Derek Prince not sure if you're familiar with him and I don't quote a lot of people but um, I'm quoting him because I do like his teachings but specifically the three points that he, he's going to highlight um, three overlooked forms of witchcraft okay and prior to ever hearing his message and teaching on this the Lord had disciplined me and walked me through some very similar topics okay and so I know that this is what the Lord is saying to to the church to the body of Christ period but especially to his prophetic people okay so I don't quote just anyone but I am quoting Derek Prince 
and these are the three overlooked forms of witchcraft that witchcraft that he that he names okay manipulation intimidation and domination okay so this is this is very important that we don't mix any of these things guys in with our gifting okay these things our selfish ambition will try to use one of these tactics to get what we want to get the gain that we want right um, anytime we do this though anytime we partner with manipulation intimidation or domination with our gifting we're operating in a witchcraft spirit okay so look around you now <laughs> look around the church of god as you know it as a whole and consider what i'm saying and how often this takes place okay and you'll be able to recognize a prophetic person or a pastor or an apostle or whatever a person in general but specifically speaking about the you know the fivefold ministry that is operating with a witchcraft spirit okay so do not operate with manipulation intimidation or domination okay when we do we invite terrible things into our lives okay and we give access to our gift um, to certain spirits which we're going to talk about one specifically here in a minute okay guys being a leader means you lead by example you set a pattern of example like paul said follow my pattern right you're you're setting an example for people to follow and people will follow okay but it's not about control it shouldn't be about controlling it shouldn't be about manipulating emotions or um, making people fearful to get what you want right tithes offerings that kind of thing okay um, i've seen people try to exalt themselves before their time okay they want power they want fame they want recognition they want money who knows okay um, and i've watched as people maybe sometimes they, they just want to feel accepted too okay there's so many different reasons for it okay and i've watched as people will name drop they'll you know hand business cards like hey i work over here if you ever need me to to speak or you ever need you know whatever um uh they'll put in the works right anyone can jump through hoops guys like putting in the works is nothing you want you want a real show do the will of god okay <laughs> that's how that's what's going to show your character whether you're doing the will of god not whether you can clean toilets at the church or be there you know what when it when it opens up or when it closes that is not what shows your true character and some people are very good at jumping through hoops and that kind of thing okay but i've seen people befriend people with ulterior motives i've seen people suck up i've seen people skillfully bribe right i've watched all these things from a distance as i sit back and the lord points them out to me and some i just recognize myself and you know why i can recognize those because i used to be that person a decade ago the lord had to carve this out of me and i'm so so grateful that he did this before my prophetic anointing came forth okay so it takes one to know one and god's called us to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves okay and i first had to recognize those things in my own life before i could notice them in other people okay and what what is taking place but they're going down a dangerous road and we'll talk more about that in in a minute okay but people do these things they they bribe they you know oh name drop i know so and so they befriend right take someone out to lunch just so that you can become friends with them so that your name will be next on the list for i don't know a spot on the worship team okay this is how sometimes people think and they're manipulating this is called manipulating okay and it is a witchcraft type spirit it's using means of control it's trying to control the outcome in a situation okay um it's a form of witchcraft okay so like i was saying god had to dig this out of me carve this out of me and it was painful guys so painful i've shared different parts of this testimony in other videos okay and this was part of what set off my breakdown breakthrough okay it was a huge like domino effect after that and different things god was working on in my life but this was a big one he wanted me to look in the mirror look in my heart and be like do you see what's going on in my house which one do you want to be okay so i mean guys this it was a painful 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 situation so much so that the lord apologized for hurting me 
okay? And I don't know that he apologizes a lot, and I don't know that he apologized to the point that he regretted doing it because he's doing it for fruits, he's doing it for discipline because he loves me, he's correcting me because he loves me, right? But here's what he said to me one night. He said, I'm sorry I hurt you. I had to get to you before she did. Okay, so let me tell you who she is because someone has to, okay, guys? But listen, anytime there is witchcraft, there's a witch, okay? And for the sake of your journey being easier <laughs> than mine has been and so many other people's has been, I'm going to risk looking like a complete wacko and discuss a invisible enemy that exists in God's church, unfortunately. She is a nemesis to the prophets of God. Her name is Jezebel. Okay. Maybe you've heard of her. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've heard things that aren't true about her. Maybe you've heard, you know, generic associations with her, but there's a whole lot more under the surface. Okay. And I want you to know right now, I'm not just speaking hypothetically or, um, generically or anything like that. This is a spirit that the Lord has verbally named to me himself. It is a very real thing that exists and he has mentioned her name, okay? As if she's an actual living being, okay? She's a direct nemesis to the prophets of God, okay? Remember the story of Joseph, guys? Very similar. I know it was Potiphar's wife, but the Lord has, has um, pointed out that story to me many times as a Jezebel type spirit that this woman was operating in, okay? So look at what she what she's doing. She's seeking after Joseph and she wants her way with something, okay? So just know that there are spirits around looking for your gifting, whether you're male or female, and wants access to it, okay? She wants it for her good, okay? She wants power, she wants knowledge, but she only wants the good knowledge, right? The, the tickly stuff, the stuff that tickles our ears, right? You know, not the stuff that corrects. She just wants the stuff that keeps people in awe and she's, and she'll suppress the rest. Okay. She wants to control the flow of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Just enough to leave the period, leave, leave the people in awe, feeling good, but not enough to correct or change lives or cause people to repent, that kind of thing, okay? Just like Joseph, guys, I started, just like Joseph, I started to get into the, the context of Joseph and then went somewhere else. But listen, she wants you to lay with her, just like Potiphar's wife did, okay? She wants you to get in bed with her, in other words, okay? And every time, every time you're on your journey and you are tempted to use manipulation, intimidation, or domination to get your way or exalt yourself or serve some selfish ambition through your gifting, right? It's like she's asking you to lay with her, okay? So run, run like Joseph did, okay? I'm not saying you should fear her, but you do need to so closely abide with God that you are not tricked, that you're not deceived or seduced by her and her witchcraft ways, okay? Um, listen, God is in charge of setting up thrones and kingdoms, that kind of thing. He, he does things out of our understanding. I just did a live um, last week on this, if you want more on that, okay? Um, but sometimes when a person is trying to exalt themselves so hard, right, um, he sees that, okay? And just like he says, you know what? You humble yourself, you'll be exalted. You exalt yourself, you will be humbled, okay? Trust me, I was humbled greatly. This is a promise. This is going to happen to the person that tries to exalt themselves. And so sometimes when a person is trying to exalt themselves so hard, God sees it and he's like, okay, you want to sit there, right? Kind of like those when the disciples are like, well, we want to sit on your right and left. And he's like, you have no idea what you're asking for. Okay, can you drink from this cup? So sometimes we don't even know what we're getting ourselves into by wanting something like that. And so God's not giving it to us and we're trying to push our way to it. Right. And so we end up, God's like, Oh, okay. You want that seat? Go ahead. You know, sit down. Right. Um, I need, I need to teach you something. All right. And so, so high up positions mean high level demons means high level temptations, etc. that kind of thing. Guys, I have seen, God has shown me my shoes in my dreams. He has shown me big shoes. I have big shoes ahead of me, big shoes to fill. But what he has also shown me is the black cup that I will drink from, the dark cup that I will drink from. And 
it's bitter. Let me tell you, it's bitter and it's been bitter for many years and I don't think it's about to change anytime soon. All right, so these high up positions though, these require training and discipline necessary to overcome what's there, right? So, so recognize her guys, recognize her. She is manipulation and control. I'm again, I'm not talking nonsense or hypothetically speaking. If you don't believe me, you don't have to take my word for it. Get on your knees, fast, seek, knock, ask, pray. The Lord will talk to you about her, okay? But do not lay with her, okay? Do not allow your gift to be tainted by witchcraft, um, using it for selfish gain or merging your gift with any of those things, okay? Manipulation, intimidation, or domination, okay? Submit yourselves to God. Practice pure heartedness, okay? Practice pure heart motives, okay? Guys, I will not like suck up or anything like that, okay? If there is something I'm interested interested in, I ask. If not, I take a seat in the back and wait for God to move and, and come my way and ask me to do whatever it is that he needs me to do, okay? And I don't want to busy myself with 20 million things just to be recognized. I want the path and the avenue that he has for me, okay? Um, but I won't manipulate, orchestrate, or name drop, or any of those things, guys. And because I don't, I don't um, suck up or befriend, that can be. I've had situations where that has come off as that person's not me. I'm not loyal. I'm not being loyal, or I'm not, you know. But because our culture has shaped this so much as the way that you get somewhere, right? It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. Sometimes, right? In 1 Peter 5, verse 6, it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Okay, guys, let him do the exalting. Um, do not let witchcraft or Jezebel taint your gift, okay, so that they can have access to it or a foothold in your life or in the body of Christ, okay? Flee anything, guys. Flee anything that looks like her, okay? Uh, over repent if necessary, guys. The Jezebel spirit hates repentance. Uh, a, a church that is constantly calling for repentance is not a church that is operating in the Jezebel spirit, okay? We have to keep ourselves completely pure from her. She, it, she will constantly be after your lucky charms, okay? <laughs> so to speak, I hate both of those words, lucky and charm. But literally, just to give you an idea, she will constantly be pursuing you, trying to get you to operate out of manipulation, intimidation, and domination, which is controlling witchcraft spirit because that's what she's after, okay? So don't do that, guys, okay? Take my word of caution. Do not do that, <laughs> okay? But anyway... So that's what I have for you guys today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next teaching. God bless.